Cat, it's Maximus here, this time with a review of the Tajima Slant 100, more of a bench review. This is a pretty special, they run about $40 or so online, they also have a magnetic version which is $50, which is pretty expensive for an angle finder, but this is a friction thimble, pretty accurate Japanese made angle finder. Tajima is apparently Japan's largest tool manufacturer, and, I, and in, over in the States, it's really their tape measures are actually pretty well regarded. I've heard of their tape measures. I don't personally own any, but ran into this unit and thought it was pretty neat. As usual, I did pick it up to use and didn't really have any idea besides it was obvious it was an angle finder that has a very large and precise scale based on a bubble. I like, I've got, you know, these Harbor Freight digital angle finders, I... They generally work okay, and many digital ones do work okay. Uh, the problem with the Harbor Freight is it just tears down batteries, whether or not you're using it. I really hate that. The other thing is sometimes these electronic ones, for some one reason or another, seem to end up just acting a little funny. And so that's what's nice about something like this. Now, if you're an electrician or so, or a carpenter, you'll just be using a speed square. An electrician, you might be using a bubble level like this that would have the four common angles that you might run into, you know, 0, 90, 45, and 30. But this is something where if you're running into an odd angle or you need to set odd angles, it's just about perfect for that. I was flipping it over just because they do have both uh, an engineering side as well as a construction face, depending on what you're using. So when you're doing the angles, you can actually do... Actually, if you had it tilted up on a roof, you'd have it tilted like this. And you can just adjust it until the bubble red level. And then what that will do is give you the angle, 40 degrees, as well as 1.2 1 1 feet of rise for every foot of length. And so that's essentially what the purpose is. It does have zeros at the 90 degrees, as well as essentially telling you it's 90. The friction thimble is pretty nice. At least some of the reviews I've read, unlike that flow tool oil pan I reviewed in the previous video, which seemed to be okay for me, but it, their quality control is obviously pretty inconsistent because there, even just on my video, there are quite a few comments about how it wasn't working out so great. But the reviews on this are certainly much more consistent. People really do like that. They say it's reasonably durable, unlike that uh, post that I did in my community tab where that stability level the plastics just started falling apart on its angle finder people said that this survives hanging around tool belts and that type of stuff pretty well the big deal about this is just the fact that it has a very large bubble level and it allows you if you really want you know you can put this line in between any of the other two lines and get easily single degree measurements and it really is pretty readable and the friction is actually pretty stiff on this so it's not going to be self-adjusting. You're not going to be accidentally bumping this once you got a measurement. It also makes it easier to get an accurate measurement because you're not, the knob just isn't overly sensitive. And you can also tell that it's actually surprisingly heavy. When I was looking online, there are some of those Chinese sites that are selling uh, copies of this, which are just knockoffs because obviously the, uh, the or I, <laughs> It appears that the patent has run out on it, but I definitely recommend getting the genuine one. And it's just so good because you don't have to see what angle is that all you have to do is actually see the bubble level. And that friction thimble really makes it really nice. You can get that bubble just absolutely perfectly centered. And we can see just the way it was sitting right there or just shy of nine degrees. I guess the only other real thing to say about this, besides how much I really like it as a general angle finder, is that it is pretty large. Uh, secondly, since there is a window here, they can't have it perfectly tight, otherwise I'd add too much friction. So there's a slight gap and sometimes dust gets in there. Which brings me, you know, it's really simple inside. It should just be like some kind of friction thing, either associated with the thimble or the whole dial mechanism. And then the thimble is just a wheel that runs against it. I'm going to peel this up a little bit here and uh, see if we can't open it up. I said before that when you, the side of a object or of a, you know, tool, piece of equipment or electronics that you're taking apart, if it's two sides, usually the side that you remove the screws from, the back side, usually is the half that comes apart. But this is a great example when that's not the case. This is actually the front half that comes apart. Here's our dial. We can see that they do put just a little bit of silicone grease in there. Pretty nice castings, really super sharp. 
This also really is as red as it looks. It's a super red plastic. Then we have our Lindell window. So you can just pull out five screws, pull out the window, be able to blow it out easily. I like the fact that the gauge face itself is also screwed down. We can actually see an intermediate gear. So let's pull off the gauge face. There is a special trick after looking at it. You actually have to pop out the needle and then you can remove the gauge face. Rather interesting, the gauge face is like the 16th of an inch plate aluminum. They do have a very thin like nylon washer right there, so this actually has quite a bit of nice build features. Wasn't expecting a thick aluminum plate for the base, and surprisingly enough, the dielectric grease, that's exactly what it looks like in there, is the sole, that's what's providing the friction. There is no special springs or anything else, so just relying on the grease. So if this thing ever gets loose, you can just take it apart, clean it out, and put some more dielectric grease. And then that's just, that in and of itself is what's providing the cushion and the uh, smooth resistance. I actually find that kind of surprising how effective that is. It's just such a simple method is the, using the grease uh, for two different simultaneous purposes. Let me get this back together. I should mention that under the needle there was like a touch of glue just to keep it in place, which I did break, but I'm not going to put it back in there. What is nice is that when the plastic cover is on, there's not enough space for the needle to actually fall out of its little holder. So even if you drop it and the needle may come loose, it's not actually going to end up floating around inside the tool, which is also nice to know. So there you go, there's a bench review and teardown of this Tajima engineering and construction angle finder. This thing I would certainly consider to be pretty close to professional. The only reason I'd hold that back, I mean, it's build quality and it's function and operation are all excellent. It could be made a little bit heavier duty because obviously if somebody's carrying around this tool belt, they'll be up on ladders you know, more than ground up higher, you know, second floor, or, you know, higher than ground floor. And I don't think this would take a really large drop, say from 10 feet. It may, but not repeatedly. There just isn't enough structure in the, the plastic with the bosses that hold the screws. And so that would probably be my one thing is if they're charging 40 bucks for this and $50 for the one that has magnets in it, it could be made just a bit more physically robust. Even though it does have a nice heavy duty aluminum uh, backplate, I don't think that aluminum backplate actually does. I mean, it, it's part of why this tool has a bit of weight to it, but I don't think that's really adding much to the structure or strength of the tool versus having made more screws or just having more plastic around where the screws mount so it could survive drops a little bit better. But nonetheless, it is a Tajima and they are pretty well respected for their measuring tools. And uh, this thing I've always uh, really have liked. I haven't used it much, but it certainly has been handy in the places that it fits just because it's just so easy to read. And you're just so confident when you find the angle and get the bubble right there in the middle that you can really count on the reading that you're getting. And the fact that it just doesn't wobble around or, you know, act in any kind of fidgety way. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.